Well, Ken, we're going to do a Bertha Firestorm. Bertha you know Firestorm, 380. I like it. Uh, we shot this at the bass. I had a bash. I had a good time, and it's got several hundred rounds to it, and it worked flawlessly. And uh, we're, getting this one, it. we're getting this one kind of out of sync, too. The, the guys at the test fire group have actually already shot this guy. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, the bash kind of threw a wrinkle into the way we do this. Usually we evaluate and send them down to the guys, and they do the accuracy and velocity and whatnot, but kind of getting it backwards. Not that it's a problem. <clears throat> and the thing is, Bursa in the past has made some pretty crappy guns, in my opinion. And this one works. I, I'm impressed with it. Yeah, I, I believe they yeah. shot, I don't know how many shots the, 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 the test fire guys, AGI test fire guys shot, mm -hmm. uh, in, in addition to the bash shooters. Yeah. And there were no malfunctions, you know, to speak of, and accuracy was quite good, they reported to us. So, uh, not that that's going to flaw our examination of it or you alter. Won't? No, <laughs> not mine. It might yours. <laughs> a couple of the things that we like yeah. are that the safety timing is correct. Yeah. Okay, on these hammer drop lever safeties, the hammer has to fall, strike the safety, if that's what it does, and this one does, and as the safety is being rotated down, when the hammer hits the safety, the safety needs to snap, snap, excuse me, the rest of the way on. You don't want the hammer to fall, hit the safety, and have it snap off, because then it potentially can hit the firing pin. And this one is very good. That timing is good. The hammer. Is I've got it in that mode right now. You see the safety is not quite all the way on. The hammer's down. As you pulled it back, it even yeah, snapped yeah. on. So. The timing is, is right and good there. The hammer and sear relationship is positive and correct. And it feels and good. And I don't mean the double action. <laughs> yeah, it's... You can see the hammer cam back slightly. It means that the hammer sear relationship is positive. The jump in this gun is good. The in the ramp jump. Ramp jump, yeah. yeah. Let's take it apart. Okay. You can see that here's our frame ramp, here's our barrel ramp, and there's a step from the frame to the barrel. They're not one solid piece, and the barrel ramp doesn't overhang the frame ramp, which is quite common in a lot of these. Uh, Remember, you gotta have a one and a half to one jump. That's probably, what, two to one? Well, I don't know if it's quite that, but it's, yeah, it's one half to two. Anyway, yeah. the bullet hits, slides up, and goes from the frame ramp onto the barrel ramp instead of stubbing against it or worse yet if the barrel ramp overhangs the frame ramp it hits underneath so that's good that's something that we like some of the things we don't like or that i don't like specifically the rear sight's plastic i just don't like that it's just not going to hold up i think the front sight is steel, steel. Mm -hmm. yep uh the gun has a magazine disconnect hammer won't fall unless the magazine's in and I just don't like that, period. <laughs> just <laughs> When I pull the trigger with the gun pointed at something, I want the hammer Magazine to fall. Magazine or not, it better go <laughs> off, right. And of course, because it's a safety, you can't take them out. Not, I mean, you can, but it's, you're asking for a lawsuit. The firing pin is quite pointed. I prefer it if it's hemisphered. It looks a lot like your head, Ken. Yeah, pointed, pointed head. Right. The extractor, it's a straight blowback gun, so the extractor doesn't extract the cartridge, the cartridge extracts itself. But if you're going to have an extractor, it needs to be in the right place so the case isn't pushed in the wrong place. What I mean by that is the extractor is way above center of our firing pin. So as the slide's accelerating to the rear, by the case pushing it, when it clears the chamber mouth, that extractor, if it's got tension like it should, it's pushing the case, it's going to want to push it down off of the breech face onto the live rounds feeding up from the magazine, tripping it off of the extractor prematurely and causing a jam. You want your extractor down below the firing pin 
or at least even with it Center with the line, bottom yeah. edge of it angled so it holds that case up on the breech face so the ejector can kick it out of the gun. I don't like poorly fit extractors. It causes 90 percent of the jams we see. The, the funny thing, and I agree it can't 100 percent or review 100 percent, but uh, this gun worked flawlessly. Uh, but how long is it going to last? No, I think when it gets good and smooth, but golly, it's got four or five hundred rounds to it. It's still working. But yeah, it needs to be fitted sooner or later. You're going to have a problem and that, for, for defense. And this on, is a defense gun. On small 380s like this, that's an extremely common problem. It's not just unique to this. It's There's so know. much more there's blowback. Straight blowback is so much more tolerant of a poorly fitted extractor because it doesn't have to work as hard. Now, Bob's our heat tree guy, so he's going to talk to you about the wear and tear around the firing pin hole. <laughs> well... We thought the tolerance was bad the other day. This is much worse. And you can probably see the, see the ring around it. This poor thing's developed steel hemorrhoids. They're very painful. If it gets bad enough, it can actually cause the gun to jam or really bad to go off when it goes closed. We don't like that. That's a very dangerous situation. I also, if you'll notice where the slide stop hits, you see? It's taken a hit. That's going to have to be recut before too much longer. The breech face is going to have to be smoothed out before too much longer. Now, granted, it may surface harden or work harden and stop doing this, but it's going to have to be cared for. And uh, in a factory, if they would just increase the heat treat a little bit, they'll probably take care of that problem, uh, problem automatically. And I would certainly do something with that extractor, but I know they're thinking they don't want to lower the extractor anymore because it can look funny. But they could lower the port slightly and lower the extractor and take care of that little problem to make the gun 100%. Or you, the, they the, could even make it like a CZ-75 where the extractor's here and the, the hook actually extends down, yeah. which would carry it as well. And that's a good thing because if you do that, it makes the extractor harder to put in. But in the case of a blowout, the extractor won't blow out. So if you have a case failure and the gas blows out, it won't take the extractor with it so the gun will still work. The Makarov, as we've mentioned before, and the Russians know what they make. It's mostly crap. Their, their ammo is bad, but they've designed their guns to go around that bad ammo. So in a Makarov, one of the early guns that did this, locks the extractor in so if they have a blowout, and they will have them with the Russian stuff, it won't go disappear. The gun keeps on trucking. might be a single shot because the magazine's gone, but it'll keep on shooting. Uh, an extractor like this would get blown out in that case. So they could fix that by simply lowering that extractor hook extending it down or lowering the whole Marianne. If it's my gun and I use it for defense, I would build this up with weld and refit it so that it did in fact do that. And you probably would too. Yeah, yeah I would. <clears throat> the draw bar is pretty thick for these small 380, you know, most of them don't have a draw bar that's that thick. It's probably half that thick. Stamped sheet metal and that's fine. This one appears to be relatively thick, so it's going to be less likely to break. That's another thing we like. Well, would you own one? Would you buy one? I you would. Li you like this gun. Yes, I, would. I know you yeah, would. I would. Would you? Yeah, for a little 380 like this, I, I, might, I might buy one. Um, I might lean towards the PPK just because. Oh. It, it's very similar. The PPK has to have that reliable yield, right? Hey, Bob. Shaking up, right? I, the reliability thing. Reliability the thing. Yes, I know. But the 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 good thing about the PPK is is it doesn't say made in Argentina. It says made in Germany. So yeah, yeah. They're once, good. They're good. My once friend. again, you have to remember that. They're good. My friend. If you're yeah, going to yeah, be yeah, German, yeah, you, you, you yeah, and yeah, yeah, bias, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, you gotta. <laughs> uh, it, it is. It, it. You know it. Yes, I would buy one. Because I, I, I'll bet you dollars to donuts, it costs a lot less than a Walther PPK. Oh yes. Uh, and and it's and it's very similar. And then I might look into changing the sights. Yeah. Well, I think that's perfect. Just knock out that plastic sight and mount a scope in there. Well. Yeah. You know, when you get old and you can't see, that's it, probably exactly a, what you need to do. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go on to something else. All right. We'll catch but you. But we next do time. like this one. Yeah. See you later. <laughs>